trend inscribed angles today. Central angles should be old news. At the top there, a central angle is an angle whose vertex is at the center of the circle. And then the sides, it says pass through a pair of points on the circle forming an arc between the two points. Well, the sides are two radii. That's an easier way to say that. Of a central angle, the vertex is at the center, and then the sides are two radii. The arc is always equivalent to your central angle. So in your little picture there, central angle ABC is 58 degrees. So we say the measurement of arc AC is 58 degrees. Central angles equal their arcs. Central angles, oops, only one O. Central angles equal their arcs. Maybe you want to write that down. I notated this wrong. Put a D somewhere on the other side of that circle. And this should say ADC, because we have to use points on the outside of the circle when you name an arc. So how would I figure out the measurement of arc ADC? Yeah, 360 minus 58. Because circles, whether the inside or the outside, are going to add up to... 360, so you should get an arc measurement of 302. Minor arcs are less than 180, usually denoted with two letters, like AC. Major arcs are going to be greater than 180, and most of the time they're going to have three letters to name them. Okay. Central angles equal their arcs. New ones here. An inscribed angle is an angle that has the vertex on the circle, and then the sides are made up of chords. An inscribed angle has its vertex on the circle, and then the two sides are two chords. An intercepted arc is the arc with endpoints on the sides of an inscribed angle, and its other points are in the interior of the angle. It's a really long definition. In our picture, the bottom one is talking about the angle, angle ACB. And this would be our inscribed angle. Its vertex, C, is on the circle. And then its two sides, AC and BC, are two chords. Remember from last week, a chord goes across the circle. The top label is pointing to our arc. Arc AB, that's the intercepted arc. So inscribed angles go with intercepted arcs. Inscribed, the vertex has to be on the circle. The bottom two-thirds of the page there, or bottom third of the page, all you're doing is identifying whether the circle has an inscribed angle or a central angle. So you can put a C on the picture if it's a central angle, or you can put an I on the picture if it's showing an inscribed angle on those bottom six. Lens, what'd you get for the first circle? What'd you get for the first circle? Good job. Alyssa, what'd you get for the second one? Kendra, third one. Taylor, fourth one. Megan? Three. Excellent. Central angles are going to be congruent to the arc. So this fourth one, that arc there, that would also be 60 degrees because that's what your central angle is. Inscribed arcs are not congruent to their arcs. Inscribed angles are not congruent to their arcs. On the top of the back side, it says the measure of an inscribed angle is half of the intercepted arc. So here, angle ABC, this would be an inscribed angle because its center is on, or excuse me, its vertex is on the circle. If arc AC was 50 degrees, what would angle B be? 25. It's going to be half of that. This picture, or this blank, 
based off of this picture, you would say that the measure of angle B equals half the measurement of, angle, or of arc AC. You don't want to put a numerical value in there. That's just your rule. The angle is always going to be half of the arc. Trevor, if the arc measure is 42 degrees, what would be my angle measure? 21. Good. Zach, if the arc measure is 60, what's the angle measure? 30. Good. Nick, if the angle measure is 15, what's the arc? Good. All right. Intercepted arc is going to be twice as long as or big as the angle, or the angle is half as big as the intercepted arc. This next theorem, students usually forget it when I give you the homework, so I'll explain it here, and then you'll forget it by the time we even get to the example about it. The measure of an angle formed by a tangent line and a chord is half of the intercepted arc. Okay, so tangents and radii make 90 degree angles. Tangents and chords are going to be half of the intercepted arc. In this first picture, here's my tangent ray, and then I have chord BC. The acute angle that they form will be half of this intercepted arc BDC. It's going to be half of whatever that green arc is. If I have this tangent ray and chord BC, this big obtuse angle that they form is going to be half of arc BDC. It's going to be half of the arc that splits them. It doesn't split the angle in half, it just goes within there. Wait a second, that makes sense, no? This one, Kendra, if arc BDC is, I don't know, 62 degrees, what would be the measure of angle C? 31, good. Ross? If arc BDC over here is 210, what would be the measure of the angle? Yeah, just half of that. This thing wants you to do it in relation to the picture. So you would say the measure of the angle is one half the measure of arc BDC. A tangent and a chord are going to be half of their intercepted arc. Okay, those are your two theorems for the day. We have three little corollaries that come from them. So these three corollaries, you don't have to know them. They actually just act like shortcuts. If you remember the two rules at the top, you'll be fine. These are just shortcuts. First one says, two inscribed angles that intercept the same arc are congruent. So 38 degrees, that's an inscribed angle because its vertex is on the circle. If I follow its chords out, Then here is its intercepted arc. Sam, how would I find the measure of that blue arc? Yeah, you're not seeing. But what's the rule at the top of the page? Okay, so when the Yeah, the blue arc I just colored in here. Okay, so what's 38 times 2? Good job. So that arc's going to be 70 to 6. Angle 2 is an inscribed angle because its vertex is right there. If I follow its chords out, then I'm on the same arc. So, Sam, what's the measurement of angle 2 then? 76. 38, good. So, the rule is trying to tell you that if you identify that they have the same arc, you don't can take out finding the arc measurement and just say, well, these angles are going to be congruent. So you can take out the process of trying to figure out if that's 76 or not, because they intercept the same arc, so the angles have to be congruent. That's what that rule is telling you. You don't have to know it, because you can still do the math to find the arc measurement. Got it, Megan? Okay. Rule number two. An angle inscribed in a semicircle is a right angle. So 
semicircle is half of the circle, what's its measurement then? 180. If I follow the chords down from that arc, I get this inscribed angle. Take half of 180 and you get 90. If it's, an in, if it's a semicircle, then it's just going to be 90 degrees. I don't really know why that's a shortcut. I think you still use the first rule. Uh, this one, students usually forget too, and it's actually a time saver if you remember it. The opposite angles of a quad that's inscribed in a circle are supplementary. So if you got a quad that's inside of a circle and all four vertices are on the circle, the opposite angles are going to be supplementary. So what's it mean to be supplementary? Good. So which two angles, Alyssa, in that quad would add up to 180? And which other two? Good. So I'm going to show you here how you can do it. Angle 4, its inscribed angle, well, its intercepted arc, if I follow the chords out, would be this whole arc. What's the length of this whole arc? 140. So then angle 4 would have to be what? 70. You'd have to be half of that, right, Spence? Okay. Angle 3, this inscribed angle, when I follow the chords of 3 out, here is its arc. What's that measurement? This red curve. Come on. like half the circle. <laughs> 180, good. So what would angle 3 be? 90. If this is 60, what's this arc over here got to be? 120. That's this part right here. This is 120. This is 60. This is 80. Can I find the rest of this arc? Yeah, because all the arcs have to add up to what? Okay, so what's 120 plus 60? 180 plus 80. 360 minus 260. Good. Show you my madness here in a second. Two, if I follow the chords, goes with this arc here. How big is this arc? 220. So then angle two is going to be half of 220, which is what? 110. What's 70 plus 110? 180. You're going to have like four of those on your homework today, and you'll probably take the long way, which is what I just did. I found all the arc measurements, and then I added the ones I needed to and cut them in half. If you remember this rule, all you have to do is find two of them and then subtract them from 180. 180 minus 70 is 110. I could have avoided doing all this. 180 minus 90 means that angle 1 has to be what? 90, right? 180 minus 90. Okay, so this is a shortcut. You'll probably forget it, which is okay, but you can still solve problems without it. Do the bottom two. The second one, you're looking for the measure of the inscribed angle there. Ross, what did you get for the first one? Ross, what did you get for the second one? Good. These are correct. Double check them. Central angles are congruent to the arc, so that first one you don't have to do any cutting in half or doubling. X is a central angle. It's congruent to its arc. Second one, it's an inscribed angle, so you have to cut half of its arc. Take its arc and cut it in half. Okay, if you have those two, do the next three on the top of this other side. Andrew, what did you get for the first one? How about the second one? How about the third one? One more time. Check them, those are right. First one, central angle is congruent to its arc. Same with the second one. Then your third one is an inscribed angle, so you have to double the angle to get the arc measurement. Put on those three. Okay, do the next one. Did you get the arc CB figured out? How did you get that? Good. Central angle, this guy would have to be 130, and then the arc is congruent to it. Okay, what'd you get for arc AC? Yep, you. Con congruent central angles, right, or whatever. How about arc AE, this guy over here? 
How'd you get 130? AE, that's this one. Okay. Why? 180 minus what will give you AE? Careful, E is probably not in the middle of the circle where C is. It's not drawn to scale. Is that what you did? Yeah. Did you connect them? Yeah. yeah, this picture is definitely not drawn to scale, so you have to be careful on that. Good, 56. Lens, is that what you got? No, I can't. Oh. Careful when you connect them, especially on my pictures, because they're not going to be drawn so that they're going to line up correctly. All right. BAE. BAE, that's this angle right here. What do you think, Taylor? How'd you get it? Good, yep an inscribed angle, so it's going to be half of its intercepted arc. Megan, CBO, that's this one right here. Mm -hmm. um. Yeah, you can do that, definitely. Triangle CBO is an isosceles triangle since it's made with two radii. So these two angles are going to have to be congruent. So Megan said 180 minus 130 divided by 2. And what did you come up with? Yep. Which means Megan BCO would have to be what? Excellent. That's one where you can find that. You can also use this one, angle B's intercepted arc. Because when I follow the chords out there, then it's going with 50, and what's half of 50? 25. You have to be careful. You can't connect this radius down to E and say that C is half of 124, not when it's not drawn to scale. Questions on that one? Killer, flip it over. And do the top one on the back side. We have to find X and Y. So when I look at my inscribed angle X, I'm going to follow the chords up. GD and GF is going to give me the chord, or excuse me, the arc DF. What would be the measurement of arc DF, Spence? Yeah. That would be 150, right? Because I'm going to add 80 and 70. So then what do I do with 150, Spence, to get X? Divide it by 2, and you got 75, right? Okay. I go for Y doing the same idea. Y uses chords E, D, and G, D. Their arc goes from E to G, E, F, G here. I don't have enough information to figure out what that measurement is because I'm missing F, G. Lindsay, can I find the measurement of F, G? Sure, because... All the angles on the outside of a circle have to add up to what lens? Right. 70 and 80, Spencer already said it was 150. So if I add that to 90, then I get 240. So if I subtract that from 360, 120, right? So this green arc, EFG, is going to be 70 and 120, which is a sum of what? 190. What do I do with 190 then to get back to Y? Divide it by 2. 85 or 95? 95. How about angle F? What can I do to find F if I told you to find the inscribed angle F? Minus what from 180? Excellent. Minus 95 from 180. What about angle E? 
180 minus 75. Opposite angles of an inscribed quad are supplementary. You could find their intercepted arcs and divide by 2 as well, but this should be a quicker way. Okay, jump to the last one. RS and TU are the diameters of circle A. RB is tangent to circle A at point R. Find the measure of angle BERT and angle trees. That's what we call them this morning. Taylor, if it says something is tangent to a circle, what do you think of? What did we learn the other day? If a line is tangent to a circle, then the line and the radius are what? No. Perpendicular. Good. So RB, there's your tangent line, and SR, that's one of the diameters. They're going to form a right angle there. Kind of have to know that to get this problem, I think. Maybe not. Um, I think you can do it without that. I don't know. What do you want to do? What do you want to start with? Well, they gave us a 126 degree angle. Can you do anything from that? What? Okay, go. Tell me what to do with it. What do you mean, Megan? What are you doing? Okay, would you agree with her? That this angle and this one form a 180, so this would have to be 54 degrees. Okay. Then I said like two or three times, look for the congruent radii. Which segments in there are the radii? Name them. RA is the radius. What's another radius? What's another radius? What's another radius? Good. So I have those four congruent segments, right? Well, if I look at triangle RTA that has these two congruent sides, then that means it also has to have what? Right? This guy and this guy? Triangle sum theorem, Taylor says all three of these should add up to what? 180 take away 54 is 126. Then do what with that to get these two angle measures? Mm -hmm. 61 with 3. Well, 63 degrees is angle TRS. That's one of them that you had to find. How are we going to find BRT? That's this little sliver over here adjacent to it. Do what? How are you, the heck are you doing that? Half of what? What's it? I know, but what's wow. it? Like half of the angle, half of an arc, half of arc. What arc are you talking about? Like name my arc. Are you talking about arc US? Which arc are you talking about? Good. Awesome. It could have been. RT is going to be congruent to 54, central angle. And then we talked about in that one theorem, a tangent line and a chord are going to be half of that's intercepted arc. So if this arc is 54, half of 54 is what, Alyssa? 27. I was just thinking you could subtract 63 from 92. Could you have done that? Yeah. There's like four other ways you could have done this problem too. Questions? Cool.